Welcome back to Dark Corners Streaming. To a new world of gods and monsters. <laughs> With the whale putting him back in the spotlight, it's good to be reminded that there was always more to Brendan Fraser than the mummy and George of the Jungle. Watch out for that tree. As well as Fraser, Gods and Monsters, which you can find on Amazon Prime, also contains what I personally think is a career best performance from Ian McKellen as Frankenstein director James Whale. Uh, no, I, I just directed the first two. No, no, the others were done by hacks. Mm. Perfectly capturing the presence of the man. Though it doesn't hurt that the physical resemblance is so close that the movie can use genuine pictures of Whale in his youth. Rather than a birth-to-death biopic, or even one set in Wales' 1930s prime, the film adapts Christopher Bram's novel, Father of Frankenstein, a partly fictionalised account of Whale in later life, suffering mental issues. So you're saying there's an electrical storm going on in my head. So his past keeps impinging on his present. Fraser's Clayton Boone is Wales' gardener, unlikely confidant, I've spent much of my life outrunning the past, and now it floods all over me. And something of a titillation to the old man. Excellent. But gradually gains a greater significance. The monster's lonely, he wants a friend. The film uses Wales films, and especially Bride of Frankenstein, as a thematic link to the director's own story, referencing key scenes, and using the movie's themes to elucidate Wales' troubled state of mind. Still, glad it has a happy ending. Mention must also be made of Lynn Redgrave as loyal but disapproving maid Hannah, who, like McKellen, was Oscar nominated for her performance. Scene 215, take one. Action. At a time when biopics expend huge energy on photo-perfect recreation, it's a delight to watch something that is happy to play with the visuals so as to create an accurate portrait of a man. You're a homosexual. Mm. If I must use a clinical name. But what's most impressive is the cohesiveness of director Bill Condon's vision. As the film proceeds, Wales' memories from childhood, the war, Hollywood, start to run into each other, bleeding nightmarishly together. Got it. And this is very much in keeping with the film's approach. These are not separate things. They come together in one man. You cannot understand James Wales' films without understanding his childhood. Straight on, son. I think you're an oxymoron. Or his time in the trenches. There were days when the weather was enough to make one happy. And for horror fans, it raises the question of how much of that greatest era of universal horror is built on the exorcism of that shared horror of the First World War. But the role of Boone is just as inextricable from the whole. He is not merely our representative, listening to Whale. Why are you here? Let's get this straight. What did you want from me? It would have been very easy to make that character a young gay man, and I think it was a smart decision not to. Boone has issues of his own which are different to Wales, but which are comparable. Yeah, yeah, forget it. Just let him sleep it off. All right. Some have said that he represents the monster, but I don't think it's that simple. Sometimes he's the monster, sometimes he's the creator. He's both because Whale is both. But the monster never receives any of my jibes. He's noble. Noble and misunderstood. For me, Gods and Monsters is everything a biopic should be. In a small-scale, focused story, it encompasses an entire life and captures the spirit of its subject. Thanks for watching. Are you a fan of this film? And out of interest, how many of Wales' non-horror films have you seen? Let us know in the comments below.